This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Gilchrist. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Glasgow, Montana. This is your Drought and Climate Outlook Briefing for Eastern Montana, and today is March 17, 2022, St. Patrick's Day. Quick look at our temperature recaps for the month of February. You can see that the, as a whole, the state of Montana finished uh, right near average, but when you break that down by county, you can see by and large, a lot of temperatures in Southern and Western Montana, again, were right near average, but this interesting um, area right down the High Line from Roosevelt County westward, uh, you know, a lot of counties finished above average in temperature for the month of February, again, slightly above average, but uh, above average uh, nonetheless. Uh, looking at precipitation for the month of February, you can see that you know, statewide ranks, you know, 44th out of 128 years, which again puts us uh, right near average uh, precipitation wise. Um, but when we flip over to the counties, it shows a little bit of a different tale. Um, it's worth noting that far northwest Montana, southwest Montana, and northeast Montana for the month of February uh, finished below average. And you have this interesting area in central Montana and south southern Montana where uh, several counties again finished above average, so really a mixed bag uh, precip wise for the month of February. It is also worth noting that the month of February tends to be a fairly dry month uh, as a whole uh, for the state of Montana anyway. Um, so again, we don't normally expect much in the way of precipitation for February um, um, from a climate perspective. So our current month, uh, month of March, temperature trends here, uh, you know, again, Interesting here to find that this uh, area is in Northern Valley County, Daniels County, and even into Roosevelt County. Again, finishing, you know, very much on the cool side temperature-wise. Um, while some areas out in the Northwest again finished a few degrees above normal, anywhere from two to four degrees above normal in some locations. Um, but by and large, you know, no real um, significant temperature trends there. Uh, looks like on the east side, most areas finished again. Um, within a couple of degrees of, of you know generally cooler than average so a little bit on the cool side and if you look at the nationwide map you can see that uh, that cooler trend has got a pretty strong signal um, up into northern north dakota northern minnesota you know a pretty um, significantly cooler temperature area there um, upwards of 10 degrees uh, below normal there in northern minnesota uh, but it's also worth pointing out here that in the southeastern u.s and even up towards the ohio river valley a pretty strong signal there for above normal temperatures. So again, temperatures anywhere from four to eight degrees above normal in some locations there in the Southeast. So uh, again, you know, we've been a little bit on the cooler side, but uh, the areas of the US uh, in finishing warmer, especially in that East and Southeast. Precipitation trend wise, you can see here again, we've largely finished on either side of normal, you know, plus or minus uh, um, a half an inch of normal um, some of the areas, you know, again, uh, west of Glasgow, down towards Phillips counties, Blaine, Hill counties, um, you know, finishing again a little bit above average uh, precipitation wise, um, which is uh, again a little bit of good news. And when you get into northwest Montana, uh, they, they saw an atmospheric river event, uh, which provided a fair amount of uh, upslope driven precipitation over there. And you can see some areas finishing, you know, upwards of a one and a half to two inches above normal. So again, uh, Northwest Montana, again, they've been getting the precipitation uh, for the last several months. It's really helped turn around a lot of their drought concerns. Uh, unfortunately, it's really hard for that moisture from atmospheric rivers to get up and over the continental divide and deliver any uh, uh, precipitation east for the east side of the state. So um, again, we're still staying, uh, you know, somewhat dry on the east side. And again, definitely nothing um, that would uh, turn around our overall drought concerns from the past uh, 14 to 15 months. Um, nationwide, you can see uh, here it's worth pointing out that uh, in Oregon, upwards into southeast Washington, into the Panhandle of Idaho, northwest Montana, again, that's where some of that atmospheric river moisture was able to, uh, you know, deliver some decent precipitation. Um, again, some areas, again, in, in Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, seeing some decent precipitation totals as well where they, they desperately need it just like us but unfortunately um, on the east side uh, just have not uh, seen a whole lot in the way of precipitation and those who did get precipitation um, know it's not going to be enough to, to overturn the overall drought unfortunately. Quick look at snow depth again with the, some of the warmer temperatures we've had uh, for the month of March you can see that uh, really no snowpack to speak of on the east side um, of Montana. 
What's interesting here is when you get uh, further to the east, out towards Minot and then into uh, portions of uh, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, and even towards the Red River Valley, uh, they did see the snowfall this winter. They've got a fair amount of snowfall, and I know that uh, Western North Dakota, excuse me, Eastern North Dakota has seen a substantial decrease in their overall drought picture. And in fact, I don't even think they're listed under the drought anymore. So some big improvements there. Of course, that came uh, with a price, a lot of blizzard warnings out there in the Red River Valley through the winter months. Um, you know, some high impact events with uh, snowfall and blowing snow. Uh, but again, uh, the precipitation was there. So it's uh, really helped to turn them around. Unfortunately, when you get into Western North Dakota and then into Eastern Montana, and even into central Montana, you know, still continuing to feel the impact of that significant uh, drought over the last uh, 14, 15 months. A departure from normal snowfall. Think about what a normal March would bring. You know, we typically have a little bit of snow out there left. Um, this is the time of the year when we would start to warm up. We'd start to see runoff, creeks and streams flowing, uh, rises on rivers, you know, ice, ice breaking up, that sort of thing. But, you know, really without uh, any snow to drive that, uh, you know, very dry out there, uh, not, not much in the way of uh, any runoff to speak of. And you can see that uh, generally we're finishing, you know, a couple of inches um, below normal on, on snow depth uh, on the east side because we just don't have any snow to speak of. So basins, uh, you know, looking uh, for irrigators, looking at the St. Mary and Milk, again, they're in pretty good shape as well as the Sun Teton and Marias. You know, that recent uh, precip event helped pack on some snowpack. Um, you know, Sun Teton and Marias, 112% normal St. Mary and Milk, which is a big vital artery for Northeast Montana, 109% of normal. So again, um, right where we want to be. Unfortunately, when you get into Southwest Montana, uh, the headwaters of the Missouri, uh, Muscle Shell, Smith, Judith, and uh, Upper Yellowstone reaches uh, really at 80 to 87% of normal. So we're a little bit behind there. Uh, no reason to panic quite yet, but certainly it's going to be worth watching. We get into northern Wyoming as well, which again feeds into the Yellowstone, um, in Upper Yellowstone 84%, uh, Tongue River doing better at 90%, Powder River 85%, Bighorn Basin 87%, and again, a lot of these feed up and into the Yellowstone and again, that contribute greatly to our, our irrigation um, come the spring and early summer months. We still have a peak snowpack building period to come. We, you know, we're looking at the uh, Smith, Judith, and Muscle Shell. We've got 30 days until the uh, median peak. Uh, St. Mary is only 20 days till the median peak, but we still have this time out there uh, before we historically see our peak snowpack. So, um, you know, this is a warmer time of the year. Temperatures are warming. That allows uh, any weather systems that come in to have a potential to hold more moisture and to uh, really hopefully pack on um, some of that. Uh, you know, mountain snows to really up that snowpack because again, with uh, 80, only 85% of normal for the Smith, Judith, and Muscle Shell, we'd really like to see that get up closer to 100% um, before uh, we start to melt off and see that runoff coming down out of the mountains for irrigation. Quick look at uh, Glasgow and billing specifically. Uh, Glasgow again, very much on the dry side so far for the year. We, you know, we we finished um, 2021 way behind normal. And uh, you know, upwards of six inches behind, and you can see that 2022 is not delivering um, much in the way of a, of a respite, at least for uh, Northeast Montana, and Glasgow specifically. You can see that uh, we're only at about 58% of normal precipitation on the year. Billings, however, they've gotten a few storms. They've been seeing some some you know reasonable precipitation across southern Montana from time to time and, and for the year since uh, January 1st, you can see they're actually at 110% of normal precipitation. Which again, overall good news, but uh, we're gonna need you know, a fair amount more to really reverse and uh, turn the corner on the drought. So again, fingers crossed that mother nature provides some respite, but you know, as the things are looking right now, it's, uh, you know, it looks very much like more of the same. So looking at other locations across Eastern Montana, you can see, um, you know, for January um, into February time frame, you can see Plentywood only 71% of normal, Culbertson 49%, uh, Burdett 66%, uh, Glendive 74% of normal, Zortman 58%, uh, Jordan 69%. So you can see we're still, again, very much behind uh, normal precipitation uh, for January and February. To get down towards Billings, you can see this is, again, only running through February. So they were at 74% of normal. 
Um, but again, a lot of areas there, however, 64% of normal, uh, Lewistown 64% of normal as well, um, still very much on the dry side. And again, we've seen a little bit of precipitation that's helped to stay, um, offset some of this, um, which is again, good news because uh, we'll take every drop we can get. But uh, again, when you, when you factor in that we've been in this drought for so long, um, it's just uh, not enough to, to really turn the tide. And this is that drought we were talking about. You can see that uh, you know all of eastern Montana remains in anywhere from uh, D2 severe drought all the way up to D3 extreme drought. Uh, we did lose those D4 exceptional drought areas at least for now, um, but it is worth watching. And, and you know this really tells the tale. You know here we are um, in the spring months, and we're already starting with uh, D3 extreme drought for a lot of areas. So a lot of concerns here. Um, also with uh, Wyoming, northern portions of Wyoming, again, seeing those D3 ext extreme droughts as well, uh, mixed in with some D2 severe droughts. So again, they're not in, in a great position as well. And uh, of course, you always hear my monthly plea here, please pass on any uh, real world impacts that you're seeing. Um, those really do help guide those decision makers in making the decisions, especially um, when we can read about what's actually happening, what's happening with your operations, you know, where you're sitting, uh, that information is just incredibly vital. So please pack on, pass on any information you might have about the, how the drought's impacting you and your operations or your, your neighbors. Um, please pass that on here. Um, again, easiest way to find is just Google a uh, drought monitor impact reporter. Um, but these are the links here, um, although they're, they're pretty long. So short-term forecast for the next seven days, uh, looking for above normal temperatures over the next week. Again, it's gonna feel very spring-like in, in the air. It could be a little bit breezy at times in the afternoons. We do have a weak front coming this weekend, could bring a little bit of light precipitation, uh, mainly in the form of rain, but not expecting a whole lot of impacts. Uh, the bulk of the precipitation you're seeing on the seven-day uh, forecast image is really looks to come you know, uh, in that six to seven days out. So really we're looking for another system, you know, maybe next Thursday could bring some additional potential for some precipitation. But uh, again, fingers crossed, you know, this is that time of the year when we would expect to see, you know, a more active weather pattern. We would expect to see weather systems passing through. So again, um, fingers crossed that uh, we get some deliverable moisture and uh, we can, you know, help to, to really start to, to turn the corner on this drought. Eight to 14 day again, uh, temperature wise, you know, by and large for the state of Montana, near normal temperatures. Uh, but this precipitation one again has me feel a little bit more optimistic that, uh, you know, far eastern Montana, um, east central, at least northeast Montana, favoring above normal chances for precipitation. And again, um, we've seen this a lot. Unfortunately, we haven't seen it realized, but again, some feeling for, for maybe some, uh, some optimism. And then even the areas that are seeing more near normal. Um, precipitation. You know, the closer we get into April, you know, this is the time of year when we start to see our precipitation chances really starting to trend upwards as we get towards our wetter months, you know, especially targeting that June time frame for our wettest month. So again, some cautious optimism here in the 8 to 14 day outlook. Um, but to bring us back down to earth, unfortunately, this is the latest uh, seasonal drought outlook. And you can see that for much of the east side of Montana and western North Dakota, I'm really calling for that drought to continue to persist, I'm not seeing a lot that's going to, you know, really turn that corner or show improving conditions. But, you know, again, let's let's uh, keep our fingers crossed that Mother Nature uh, finally decides to take pity on us and deliver some precipitation. But, you know, right now there's not a lot out there, but um, this is my glimmer of hope, uh, the April, May and June outlooks. This is our historically wettest months. Um, this is definitely the months that are most important to agriculture as far as getting crops, as far as getting grasses to grow. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, large, a lot of eastern Montana in that equal chances uh, category for temperatures uh, with some areas, you know, in the uh, northern reaches of Montana favoring below normal temperatures. Uh, but on the precipitation side, this is what gives me a little bit of optimism. You know, we're favoring equal chances for a lot of, uh, of uh, central and northern Montana. Um, equal chances for the months of April, May, and June would be very welcome. Again, considering those are our wettest months, we would be very grateful uh, to see normal precipitation. And again, normal precipitation, especially for May and June, um, will go a long ways towards uh, alleviating some of the drought impacts and really helping to get those uh, crops off to a good start, to get those grasses to grow, get some cuttings of hay in. So again, I, I feel like there's some cautious optimism in here. But unfortunately, again, you can see this, this big bullseye of below normal precipitation favored over the Great Basin. 
and that extends up into southern Montana as well. So unfortunately, it looks like uh, you know some of the spring months for southern Montana could be a little bit um, on the drier side, or at least favored to be more on the dry side. Um, so it is what it is, I guess, at this point. Um, summer outlook, uh, no surprise here, uh, better chances for above normal temperatures and below normal precipitation. Um, that's definitely been the trend here as of late. And uh, again, I, I think that if we can get those June rains in some form, um, it'll go a long way towards alleviating uh, the impacts of potential uh, warmer and drier conditions into the summer months. I wanted to put a plug in. I know many of you are well into calving season already. Uh, but we do have this cold advisory for newborn livestock. Uh, both Billings, uh, Glasgow, and even Bismarck run this. So if you just kind of fastest way again to find is Google cold advisory for newborn livestock, Glasgow, Billings, or Bismarck. And uh, you can find this tool. And again, it does a really good job in highlighting where those risks exist and when those risks exist to newborn livestock to maybe take uh, additional uh, precautions to help protect those, uh, those uh, young newborn calves. Uh, Again, it factors in things like wind chill, um, rain or wet snow, what the humidity is like, you know, if the animal is going to be able to be dried off quickly, uh, any combinations of those elements, and then, of course, any sunshine versus cloud. And again, we think this is a really good product out there. Uh, I would encourage you to use it. And if you have any feedback, uh, I'd love to hear it. We always like to hear, um, you know, the good and the bad as far as uh, how things are working out for you. That concludes this uh, drought and climate outlook briefing. The next briefing will be April 21st. Uh, the, just wanted to point out that the background image here is as of March 15th. It comes from the Sentinel satellite out there and you can see that a lot of the ice is starting to uh, um, rot in place. We have some open channels even there. You can see this is Glendive up here, West Glendive, um, just kind of showing off uh, um, you know, some of our newer uh, capabilities here. We get a nice clear day, we can really start to see some of that ice. And of course, you know, as we go forward here for the next few weeks, we are going to continue to have uh, concerns regarding ice jamming, you know, as this ice starts to move. And again, as always, uh, pass on any ice jamming, um, if you happen to note it, uh, to uh, either your local DES or even local law enforcement uh, so they can push that information up the chain. But thank you, and we will see you on April 21st.